welcome to United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. I'm Lionel in Toronto. And of course, my guest, I'm just kidding, my co-host, Robert Warren. Robert from, yes, the United States of America today, Tennessee to be specific. I'm back home, as you can see, back in my normal environment. And uh, I just want to point out my co-host's um, new setup there. He's finally got his lights fixed up and everything's looking good. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, it's, 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 it's still a work in progress. It's not perfect yet, but I kind of like it. Now I have a little bit of place I can stick my pixel boxes behind me because, yes, I am a bit of a pixel fanboy. Uh, it should be noted, however, that while I, you might hear me make fun of things like iPhones and whatever, uh, I am a huge believer that uh, uh, competition is is necessary. I don't want them going out of business because they make it so everyone has to try to either keep up, catch up, or do better. Um, but also, I am a huge believer of everyone should get what they feel most comfortable with or you're going to be unhappy. And 100%. I know you agree with that. Yeah. 100%. Uh, that said... Um, that kind of segues into uh, Apple AI, Android AI, Windows AI, Mac AI. Only two of those platforms actually have it right now <laughs> in the platforms. But that's that's me doing the make fun of again. Um, there's a lot of news going around. Uh, well, not just news. It's just everything. It's like AI is like we mentioned goes gets better and better almost daily, it seems. And there's video generation services. We talked about this a few podcasts, well, more than a few, I think. Uh, several of last season, we'll say. Uh, and um, we talked about a couple of them. And I, I don't believe we tried either of them at the time because the best one was a Chinese one. You had to jump through hoops to get a fake Chinese number and all kinds of stuff like that. <laughs> I wasn't going to do it. Um, I'm pretty sure you weren't going to do it either. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but now there's more, and one of them is a Chinese one, but you really only have to give them your phone number, and they send you a text uh, to verify who you are. That's it, or that it's your number, and, and that's it. Now, I don't really care about that because, you, uh, I mean, I can fix that problem at the drop of a hat anyways, but uh, if it were a problem. The other one, I'm not sure if it's American or not, but it's all in English, and it uses a, a, a Google sign-in which is fantastic because if you ever decide you don't want to have anything to do with it or you worry about it, you can just go into your actual Google settings and block it. Bob's your uncle. The only thing they have is, yes, you can sign in with Google. Google gives them the author uh, authorization. Uh, but that said, I actually want to, I'm going to move my mic a little bit here for a second. Uh, I, I want to pull up, if my mouse works, there we go. I want to pull up this one. Uh, there we go. Uh, this is, uh, I, oh, good Lord, I think this was from the Chinese. No, this is not. This is actually from the American one. I had to wait. Uh, it said six hours, but apparently so many people have tried it. I think it took closer to 10 or 11 hours. Uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if it's free, you only get three a day, which is not too bad, three a day. Uh, but you have to wait a long time in the key for it to be done. Otherwise, it would only take a couple of minutes to do it. However, at the bottom, it says Xenomorph doing a TED Talk. That was what I told it to do. I'm going to tell you without even having to play this video, that is not a Xenomorph. Let me just actually play it, though. Uh, 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 did I? Okay, did I hit the right button or the wrong button? Uh... I'm I think you hit see. it twice. You clicked it and then you clicked it again. So it started and stopped. Oh, yeah. I was trying to get back to the window so I could actually see this uh, instead of that. I, I really wish you could do this in the window. Uh, here's what I'll do. I'll put it on repeat. And then I will go in and actually click the correct window. Now, <laughs> as we talk about this, if anybody doesn't know what a xenomorph is, have you seen the movie Alien, Aliens? Well, the entire Alien franchise. That alien is called a xenomorph. If you haven't seen the movies, you've seen pictures on the internet uh, in memes and whatnot. This is not a xenomorph. So it looks pretty cool. And you can see that it clearly does say Ted in the background. So it's not terrible, per se. Uh, 
but I would I, I not good. Um, <laughs> I tried to uh, what was it? I think the uh, the other one that was that's uh, was it a Chinese one? Oh no, I'm sorry. I didn't. I don't think I did the Chinese one. Uh, I'm gonna have to actually look up exactly which ones I use now. Uh, one I can't remember the name of offhand. The other one is called. Uh, oh Lord, it's amazing. I have to look at my phone. Give, just give me a second while I try to figure out which one of these. This is the other one. Uh, oh, it's not going to play it automatically, is it? Uh, okay, you can speak while I'm not speaking because we don't want I, dead I, air. I, for the, I thought you for the audio I listeners. You had something queued up here, so I, yeah, so did that? I, but it didn't. It it didn't play. Oh, it, oh, is it playing now? Finally. Because I'm not yeah. seeing, I'm not seeing. Uh, yeah, it is okay. Um, okay, that was also supposed to be Xenomorph doing a TED talk. Again, not a Xenomorph. Doesn't say anything about TED. It just looks like, you know, somebody who's basically telling us that he's going to be our new alien overlord or something. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I tell you, I'm not impressed with the way that did. Although the quality is not terrible. So I decided to try something different. I decided to go with uh, an older. Now get get this: if you know anything about old older music, like from fifties, late fifties, early sixties, and maybe you'll figure this out. I put in as the prompt an older female gypsy with a gold cap tooth and a small little bottle that with the text on it says "Love Potion Number Nine. and that didn't play either, did it? I'm not having much luck with this right now. I know this this uh, alien creature is still on the screen. Oh, it's just taking a while because I'm I'm doing two things at once. That's why it's just it's just a longer process. Um, yeah. A, her mouth isn't open, so I don't see a gold cap tooth. And B, they didn't they cut the bottle off. So there's no so, audio with any of this. No, they don't do audio. This is just AI generation. But that does look like a real human being. That's kind of impressive. That's just AI. Okay. Well. <laughs> so that's 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 pretty impressive. Uh now uh, the next ones I figured would get a little bit more interesting, which were all from the second one I did, which is the one you can sign in with Google, and I'll get that information. Um one of them, uh, let's see. Uh Oh, yeah, no, I'm going to save that one for last. I uh, asked it, a family having dinner in a nice restaurant. And that sounds simple because this particular one that I'm about to show you does really good human beings. Um, but apparently it doesn't do well with eating because, well, is it going to, oh, it's not going to open it. Oh, nice. Okay. It's working. Well. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Um yeah how do i even explain this one i don't know I mean, seriously really dude. weird that's like backwards or something let me let me oh you know what i'm gonna pause it at a certain point right here what what the <laughs> heck is this are you kidding me where and look at it this other this these other hands this woman's hands are here and it's the oh, same woman yeah. and that's not a mirror right and then and if you go forward they merge and then the bowl <laughs> what? Yeah, look at the guy's hand is split by the, the candle thing I, yeah i it's 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 crazy it is not good when you introduce objects that have to be played with unless what, it's what something company is that? like texting with a phone this one uh let me just bring up my phone here for a second because it's kind of embarrassing that i forgot uh what they are i might have to go good lord uh yeah it's trying to search and i'm just trying to go to history yeah and uh, if you look at her her left hand her thumb is back <laughs> yeah oh it, oh it is too <laughs> look at that. oh my god that's even worse than i thought that one i didn't even notice yeah it's pretty bad hot shot uh hotshot.co uh you should actually go and take a look at it uh just from where you are right now just to, just to have a peek uh, the other one, uh, my goodness gracious me, I have to, I have to scroll a little bit. Um, starts with a K. Kling, Kling AI, Kling AI. Um, that one is, 
I think depending on what you're looking for and what you're trying to do might do a slightly better job. But this one here uh, does it does really good with 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 people, but it's not not when they're doing anything, and that's the problem. Now the last one, I did uh, the prompt: an eagle and a beaver doing a podcast with an American flag and a Canadian flag. <laughs> so when this one comes up, let's let's play spot the mistakes. <laughs> uh and it, honestly if it wasn't for the few mistakes it would be absolutely fantastic but you can see the first massively very noticeable mistake i'm assuming uh yeah the beaver's got an eagle's snout on it <laughs> yeah peak yeah that's that's crazy um there's no american flag to speak of and the canadian flag mm -hmm. looks like it's been through a blender and then in an accident yeah, <laughs> that's terrible. Uh, and this is also taking up a little bit of my com lack of computer computing space. So I'm going to cut that off as of as of now. Uh, remove that from the lack of sharing. Did you did you uh, load up a share too? I did because I, I speaking of that, okay. I was going to mention this anyways. Is you know the Hydra uh, that we played around with in the past. You remember I told you they gave me um, yeah. access to some beta stuff, which gave me pro access. So I have like a ton of minutes and 2,400 characters and all the, you know. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. And they're, they've actually That's... done a lot of image enhancements. And I actually got an email today. I don't know what it is, but I got an email today from somebody at Hedra saying there's something that's going to be released at some point in the future that's going to be pretty awesome. And they just wanted me to know about it since I was part of their beta testing and one of their yeah. uh, creators. And uh, once it comes out, then I could share it. I don't even know what it is. I just know that it sounds like something pretty, pretty awesome. But uh, so I created this today because I was kind of playing around with it. And... Um, yeah, this is this is pretty awesome. This is the one that's supposed to do audio though, right? Cuz I'm not hearing doing it. audio. Not 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 over here, it's not. Uh maybe check your uh Hold on. Street not stream labs, what am I trying to say? Um your steel series and see if it's uh oh okay. audio is checked off on there no, i see i i it's uh my bad so let's see here let me redo this here oh that's my gaming channel for everybody who wants to know that if anybody does yeah check it out like subscribe and and also i apologize in advance if uh you hear me uh playing in his videos okay. <laughs> Sorry, I get a little boisterous. So I got to stop sharing and then reshare it because I forgot to click the little slider to include sound. Oh, okay. That's why. Uh, so there we go. Okay. There we go. So a little background. Um, I took some text context from a video that I created earlier today for one of my other channels. And I just wanted to create an image like this to see how well it would talk. Cause they, again, they've done some improvements. So my, my image creation was just simple. Create me a young professional man wearing glasses with hazel green eyes. And that's what it created. Cool. That's, that's, that's yeah, pretty accurate. So. Still no audio. <laughs> well, a little technical glitch here. Uh, I believe we had this issue once, uh, several months back, but uh, I don't know why. I don't remember what it was we did to correct the issue. I don't know. 
Uh, did you check in uh, in? Um, it keeps turning the it keep. Did you check in the Steel Series app? Turning the uh, share off. But did you check it's it? Not, it's it's the Streamlabs. It keeps turning off the audio share slider for the screen for some reason. Oh, I don't I don't understand why. Can you are you sharing are you sharing a video or or the or or a screen? Uh, sharing the whole screen, but I'm going to do it different. Hang on here. Yeah, Wait, share the video. It's just, it'll actually, automatically yeah. share the audio. Okay, well, in, in the I, meantime, I while I'm he's just, looking that up. Uh, I've had it here. I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is I'm going to share just that window. And so that way it will. One window. Can you hear it? I hear nothing. Oh wait, I, it, well, <laughs> it helped out. I shared it like an idiot. <laughs> no, I didn't share it like a dummy. Okay. <laughs> uh that's what Let I did a few out. weeks back. Here we go. Uh, okay. Let's Here hope we it go. works. <laughs> if it doesn't work, we're gonna have to move on. It's hump day, and Here I'm feeling go. good. I hope you're having a productive week creating content. Check out the Nomadic Income Summit. It's free and has awesome speakers sharing tips on building an online business and creating a nomadic lifestyle. One speaker emphasized structuring your business around your life, not the other way around, for better efficiency. Take what works for you from these successful creators and leave the rest. We all have our struggles. Mine is creating thumbnails. Not my forte. Yeah. But that's okay. We can all learn and improve. This content creation journey is about finding financial freedom, helping others, or simply enjoying the process. Remember, even one person finding love. your content helpful makes it all worthwhile. Keep going and crush it. Don't forget to check out the summit. Link in the description. Have a fantastic Wednesday. It was getting a little uh, blurred because um, I was streaming it yeah. through the browser. But I, I that, think if would, you watch the facial expressions with the eyebrows and yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's good. It, it kind of lost a little something going through, and I'm not sure why. I, yeah, um, I don't know. and the timing with the with the mouth and the audio was off for about yeah. I think that's because I was seconds. streaming it. It caught know, up. Yeah. It caught up a bit though. Uh, which yeah. is which is pretty cool that it did. Uh, no, it's because you're streaming it. Obviously, you're. It's not. It doesn't look like that when you're seeing it. What you're seeing, because I know I've tried the Hedra as well, and and it's spot on uh, for yeah. accuracy in that respect. And that does actually look even better than the last time I tried it. Yeah. So they've made some improvements. I yeah, think it would be neat to make a to make an AI video like that. It's very similar to what you just did, and then have it actually say at the very last. Uh, I am an AI model. And if you want to know more about this, check this channel out, like, and subscribe. <laughs> oh yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, you can, because I can then, no one can tell you, model. nobody can ever claim that you're trying to fake anything. You're, you're being straightforward. This is how good it yeah. is. And let me show you how I did it. And yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's something. This is one of the reasons why I like talking about this because everything's moving so quickly in the AI space as we transition a little bit, a little bit of a segue here. Um, Google is not, I, won't, I don't want to say knocking it out of the park uh, because Gemini has some flaws and faults, but if you use Gemini in the appropriate right way, it's incredibly helpful. I use it multiple times a day. Um, in fact, I was um, called about a, a, a job opportunity uh, a new employment opportunity uh, today, and they wanted to see my resume. And I asked him, well, you said, you have access to the online, uh, my resume, it's up to date. And he explained to me that the service that they were using to see my resume kind of changes it to a specific format. So everyone, everyone's pretty much looks the same. I'm different information, but exact same formatting. So I said, okay, uh, I guess I should just send you another one. Uh, and I'll, so I'll just go and, and send you this one and i remember that i had actually only just a few days ago 
decided to pull my resume back down to my device. And then I asked Gemini to, uh, to critique it and tell me what to do with it. And it gave me the advice. It told me what to do. And then I said, can you lay it out for me? And I, it did. And I just basically changed pretty pop, put it, popped it right in there. And Bob's your uncle, uh, resume oh. fixed. Uh, nice. I almost had to do, had, almost had to do nothing. But the, the beautiful thing about it is it does make you think. It doesn't just say, okay, I'm going to write it for you. And then you have no idea what it's on it. Uh, right. You still have to know what you're putting on it and yeah. why you're putting it on it um, and where. And then it basically says, well, this is what you should do. You should include this. This information is too in-depth for what you're looking for. This type of position, you shouldn't send a cover letter. They don't look at it in that type. Or this type of position, you need a cover letter or it's traditional, mm -hmm. you should. Uh, and it's just absolutely fantastic how well it works. And, and I guarantee there's other AIs do it, but what I, again, it, this is Gemini. Um, you can do some of this even with free versions of Gemini. If you have, uh, I, I, I think, uh, if you like put it, uh, you know, the, the text into the online version. Um, it's yeah, but sort the free of, ones have like limited free, characters. And, it, and does, it does, it does. But, but uh, an, a, an average simple resume is not a problem for it. Limited yeah, characters is well more than a resume worth. Um, but uh, considering how many people either do now or will have access to more Gemini features included with their service, their phone, or or you know Google One, and, I, and I've said this before, and I know you've said it too. You really should subscribe to things like Google One if you're an Android user. Um, it's kind of important. You have those updates. Your phone goes bad. You can redo your phone uh very easily get all your data back everything your text I, and it, it saves rcs messages for crying out loud um yeah. and you don't have to you could tell it not to save it or you can update a, you can you get a new phone and say i don't want the messages but i want the the other data you know some of the other stuff you know and and the best part about it is just, it, it, it it even keeps all of the information you can transfer everything over well, actually, no, the phone does this part, too. I was going to say Wi-Fi, but that's actually on-device stuff. Uh, with Pixels, for sure, and I believe Samsung's as well uh, do that. So you change a phone, and it will ask you if you want to transfer the Wi-Fi from your previous device. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It, it Samsung all over. Yeah, it makes it Everything so easy nowadays. Yeah, so th that's always a great thing. But a lot of that uh, that, that they're doing now uh, from the Pixel 9 and upward and you're going to start seeing that on Samsung phones as well. Some of that is AI driven now uh, in a lot of these things uh, that used to be just, uh, you know, some algorithm that they threw together. So just even, uh, and I don't have this feature in my Google photos yet, uh, probably another one of those Murica things, but <laughs> uh, the ask photos thing, which isn't rolled out to everybody yet anyways. Uh, but when it does, uh, of course you do. <laughs> Anyways, uh, when it rolls out to everybody or for those who have it, it's neat because instead of just searching, oh, well, I want um, the beach or me at the beach, it may understand you and it may understand the beach, but it may show you tons of beach without you and tons of you without the beach. But if you have the AI involved in it and you said, I want to see pictures of me on the beach with my wife, my best friend, my brother, whatever those are the ones it will show you uh as an example right i could say oh i i, I only want to see pictures from when i went downtown as long as the cn tower was in the shot i have umpteen dozens <laughs> of shots like that of which i wasn't taking a picture of the cn tower but sometimes i like to look back on it because i like to see how much the city skyline has changed since then and that would be convenient instead of having to look for the sea and tower and then look through hundreds of photos. Yeah, I guess I don't have it. I thought I did, but I don't have it. Oh, thank God. I didn't want to have to be jealous about one more thing. <laughs> Is it under searches? <laughs> and where uh, it, where... I think it would literally just be search. And the first time you would do it, it would probably give you a pop-up that would tell you, you know, welcome to this or that. You know how Google does it, right? They always tell you yeah. about those newer uh, things. So I, I imagine that's how that would work. Yeah, I, I, um, have it. I haven't seen any real demonstrations of it yet. Mostly just talk about it and mock up stuff. 
So I'm not even yeah. sure that anybody other than Android police has got it working yet. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, you know, always with Android police, who, by the way, I don't read as much uh, anymore because um, about every one in every four times I go to their site or, uh, sorry, I get a notification of an article for their site. Uh, it's paywalled. And I'm like, okay, you're Android police. You're not the New York Times. You have no business paywall in your site. You, you, you've you been there for, for Android users for about the money, over man. a decade. And now you're just basically shutting a bunch of us down. I'm not paying. Sorry, Android police. No way. Uh, hello, oh, Verge. <laughs> and the verge isn't isn't the the apple lover uh place it used to be so it's yeah i don't mind the verge anymore now <laughs> and they, they actually make good videos i'm, I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you uh, on youtube there's some of the review videos and uh open uh box openings or whatever you call it, box openings <laughs> watch me open this box <laughs> Unboxing. Well, that, that is what it's <laughs> unboxing. Thank you. Box opening. Uh, yeah, I guess technically. Yeah, but um, you get what I'm saying. So yeah, I mean, obviously, all the AI stuff is really I mean, cool. It, the thing it yeah. has a long way to go in a lot of different areas. Uh, I think I told you earlier before we came on air. The you know Apple decided they wanted to back out of yeah. some funding with OpenAI. Um, Microsoft, I heard, is bringing back their um, recall feature with Copilot in Windows. Uh, supposedly, they have rewritten it to um, improve the security and privacy of users' information. Um, I don't know exactly what that means. I haven't I, even played with I, it. So. Well, I can tell you that, that that's not the concern people had about it. The privacy and it's, I mean, come on, this stuff is local anyways, right? Um, the issue, of course, is that people thinking like, I got private stuff on here and if I lose it, it's my own damn fault, but I don't want Microsoft recording a backup of it. So if one day something goes wrong and I have to send it in for service, it's going to be there for someone else to see. I mean, people have private lives. And I'm not even talking about the people who have stuff they shouldn't have on there. I'm just talking about people who have every right to put perfectly normal stuff on, sure. but it is nobody's business but them and maybe somebody they care about. Uh, you know, <laughs> or you got some people who are like, I don't want anybody else seeing pictures of my kids playing in the backyard, and that's perfectly fine. They're your kids, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, you don't mean for the tech guy who's got to fix your computer to see it. And if you if you if you turn all of the lock this and that on, you wonder. Uh, are they going to be able to see that if I have to redo my computer and the tech guy is wanting us to do it because I don't know how to do it. He's going to see all my stuff pop up all of a sudden. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, it doesn't seem like I, I think it's a dumb idea, but here's the thing. I don't think that they make it mandatory to have to use it. I mean, really? I'm pretty sure you don't have to use it, right? You can just turn it I off. I have no idea. The only way you get it is with one of those Copilot PCs. Um, it's not available like on a regular Windows 11. Yeah, it yeah, exactly. That That's the other thing. So I, I, I would have to. I haven't had my hands on any Copilot yeah. PC to even see. Yeah, no, neither, like. so neither I have I. Neither have I. But I mean, it, it's not much different than you know Google doing all of its backup stuff. I mean, in reality, everything on my on my um, uh, like if I had a Chromebook. Uh, every or you know, or any kind of you know, Google product, all of my Android phones, they're, they're backed up because I want them backed up. And I mean, like every single little thing, except for a couple of folders where I'm like, I don't want them backing up because I'm not keeping this stuff. You know, I take a few screenshots that I automatically move to a different folder because I'm like, you know, I, I use them for reference and I don't want to keep them. Um, Things like that, right? Somebody sends you pictures and, and messages or messenger, and yeah, I'm not keeping those, so I don't back them up. I delete them later. Uh, you know, memes and stuff. But for the most part, everything else is backed up, whether it's private information or not, um, because it's a convenience to me. But the thing is, is I don't have to. I can sign into Google and use all the Google services without backing up anything at all. Nothing. Sure. That's what people don't understand. You don't have to back up anything if you don't want. Oops, if you don't want to. Uh, and yeah, it, sure, with Microsoft, as soon as you get your phone or whatever new watch or whatever, and you're like, "Why isn't any of my stuff there?" 
Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. Told that you didn't want it to do that. <laughs> so yeah, know. yeah, precisely. And now yeah. uh, that's not an issue. And by the way, I, one of the things I love about that I finally have Wear OS five on the watch is when I do get another watch, I can transfer it just like I did with the phone. You couldn't do that with Wear OS four. You need five to do it. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> Wear OS five. Sure. Wear OS sure. five. Yeah. <laughs> Galaxy Watch 7. Yeah, fantastic, man. Um did you, did, I, did you do a review on that on your channel? Or are you going to? I mean. Oh yeah, it's already been up. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's already been. I didn't see it. See, there you go. I gotta pay attention. Uh <laughs> yeah, he doesn't look at anything I post, so that's not true. But they, okay, let me explain something, people. He posts about seven thousand videos a day. A yeah. 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 Maybe not that many, but uh it, 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 there's 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 a decent amount and I, i'm gonna watch other content creators too and, and in all honesty most of your content i watch is to do with review stuff that interests me and i it, because i want to see the stuff i'm interested in like even though i don't have any means to use the garage door opener because it's not my house i'm paying rent here uh i still i still like the uh, the idea the tech everything you did with that so i watch those videos uh, and when you do other videos about uh, you know updates about how that works and how amazon getting into the garage and i, I like that information i like That's that stuff so i watched that by the way yeah. oh I, I especially when you were gone right <laughs> well my, yeah my wife was still here but yeah we, oh if right we were, yeah, if, yeah if we were gone then and yeah it, she's used it a few times i've used it a few times it's even we've even used it when we've been home. We just didn't want them ringing doorbell or something like that, or we thought it might be raining. So yeah, yeah, I was always, I was always upset that we didn't have that feature here. But I got the notification last week that we now do have that feature here, and nice. don't have to get a new garage door opener because they actually have a unit that you can actually connect and you can plug the whole thing in and then just put the. I guess it would be not even a keypad. They use they actually use their own phone. Uh, and it connects hmm. wirelessly. So you set it all up like that, and you know more about this stuff than I do. But I didn't know that. So you can get this unit to work with anything other than, oh, what was it? It said other than the yellow one, I think. You said if button, it wasn't, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's, there's different said, colored was, buttons on garage yeah. doors that are different. But this one said it would be compatible with any of them that wasn't yellow. And then I looked at it, and I thought, I think the one we have is yellow. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But is there an orange one? Because if there's an orange uh -huh. one, then we have yes. an orange. Okay, the ours is orange, then it's not yellow. Good. Okay. Yes. So uh, I could actually technically do that, and it would be interesting. But the reason why I don't anyways is because that garage is just big enough for his two vehicles. When I say just big enough, he can't get out, close the door, or turn the alarm off. He has to actually drive out, shut it, and go back in the house and turn the alarm off. Okay. <laughs> it is um too tight. He has two very large vehicles. So, so does he so, have to like get it out and leave it neutral, push his vehicle into the garage and <laughs> Well basically <laughs> the only way it worked because they would have to go into the neighbor's yard to get into the side door to get into the oh, garage. Okay. And they could technically put it there. If it wasn't a large package, if it was a large package, it wouldn't work because then he'd come home and potentially drive over it, right? Um Mind you, if the car wasn't there, he would be able to, but it would be worse if it was because he wouldn't see it when he got in. Um, yeah. But that wouldn't work very well. So it'd have to be a situation where they could actually open the garage door. And then if that failed, it would be a kind of a mess up situation if it failed to close or something. So, <laughs> um, so it wouldn't work here, but it's an excellent, it's an excellent thing. I love, I love the idea of it. It'll work great for a lot of Canadians who, some of them have never known that it was a thing and others were like me were jealous that americans had this option for years and we're just getting it now so yeah i don't i don't understand the um canada doesn't have it but us does i mean i understand obviously it's a different country but it's well, in this everyone's english speaking so I mean, it's not like it's a different foreign language that you know you have to like learn a new language i think in right? i think in this case there may have been some legalities in regards to um the type of insurance that was legally necessary in most provinces and so they would have wanted to do it in at least 
the two biggest provinces before introducing anywhere. Like, I guarantee you, they're probably not offering the service yet in Manitoba because it's a much smaller community. Um, I mean, I can't guarantee that. I'm just saying I, it's possible. But if they've offered it here, they probably have it available in most of Canada at this point. So they probably wanted to roll it out everywhere. Uh, yeah. Definitely BC, Alberta. Uh, Quebec might be the one holdout, or they might have a different rule for how it can be done. But they have to go through all this. I mean, much like how they have to do regulatory stuff state by state, in addition to whatever federal laws might apply. They have to do the same thing here, but provincially. But the the hoops to jump through provincially here are greater in some cases when it comes to things. Uh, In most states, yeah, in most states, um, even if the laws are a little bit different than the federal laws or if they're stricter or lighter, it's usually just a matter of the state saying, okay, well, if this is going to be the way you want to do this, we can allow this because the federal allows this. And it's it's like stamp of approval if it's not something that's going to hurt anybody. Uh, in not every case, obviously, but in most cases. But in Canada, it, it just doesn't go that way. It ends up going to the, the, these committees that end up having to send it to uh, 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 some other consortium of people that have to do a study. And then they have to vote on whether they should do a study. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I've always made that joke. It's like it's whenever study, somebody wants to change a law, to a study. yeah, whenever they want to fix a pothole in 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 Canada, anywhere in Canada, they have to uh, you have to request it, and then they have to basically commission a study to see if a study should be done on if there should be a study to see if they can afford to do the pothole fixing. <laughs> Government insane. <laughs> God giveth and the government taketh away. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, okay. What are we? What are we? What well, are we going on? Because we, we rambled so, a bit. Well, yeah. No, I mean it's you know wrapping that up. <laughs> so, um, you know, I showed you the other day. I got my new Google TV streamers, the 4K. Streamers. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. And so I've got one of them hooked up, and I have another one that I'm, I'll hook up once I can do uh, my review for my tech channel, but. Yeah. It is, um, yeah, it's really nice. And oh, I bet. that NVIDIA Shield will end up coming up into the kids' room since it doesn't yeah. get used that often um, because they don't really need, you know, much anyways. And the other one will go downstairs. It's fast. It's smooth. It's real snappy. Great features. I mean, I literally had it hooked up within like five yeah. minutes. And that's that's the thing with Google. Like every Google thing, you know, my temperature sensor, my thermostats. Uh, yeah. I mean, when it's a Google to Google stuff, man, it's just like seamless. It just works. And it, this is the same thing that we talk about when people say, well, Apple, it just works. Everything works together. You can't get it with anything else. But yeah, you can. Virtually anything Google. And if you happen to be Samsung on Samsung, you get the benefit of having Samsung with Samsung and you get Google products to work with it seamlessly. Yeah. Uh, and Pixel's the same thing. You're using a Pixel and then you get uh, other Pixel items and, and, and they work seamlessly. Your watch, you set a timer on your watch or a stopwatch or an alarm uh, or bedtime mode or whatever and it, it's, it connects to your phone automatically and it's synced, right? Yeah, my watch yeah. automatically turns yeah. off when... Um, First Pixel I, Watch didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Second Pixel Watch did it, but okay. And then they did an update. It made it better. But then Wear OS 5 came along. And I promise you, if I do anything with this watch, it changes my phone instantly yeah. and vice versa. And I can transfer calls between the two. I couldn't do that originally. Yeah. So. It only makes sense, though, that a manufacturer is going to make sure everything within their own yeah. ecosystem is seamlessly... Um, integratable and connecting of course. and functional. Yeah. It just It's like, duh, you know, of course. Right. And now that we're using Google TV because we got rid of our AT&T uh, stream TV service. Um, wow. I mean, like I had the Google TV app on the AT&T streaming box, which is basically just an Android TV box. Like, um, what you would call it yeah something like that um i've never it, opened it it's still in the plastic man 
Yeah, it, it's wow. It, it, Google, excuse me, YouTube TV running on a Google TV device like that it runs so much better. It's not even funny. It's yeah, crazy. yeah, it, it is crazy. And and in all honesty, I like the idea of it even better than having Google TV on the Google on a TV. Um, yeah. Don't get me wrong. My next TV is going to absolutely have to have Google TV on it. But there is a reason for that. And that's because if if I'm playing the PlayStation and it turns off, it automatically wants to switch over just because of the way the system is set up to the regular TV rather than switch back to the HDMI I, I previously was using. And if it's already got Google TV, then it's already where I want it to be. And I can just, you know, like watch it like that for a while and then change it when I need to. Uh, I don't have that option now. Instead, it goes to Samsung TV, which, by the way, it's not bad. It's got a lot of free stuff on it. But I can get all of that free stuff, most of it, with yeah. Google TV. Yeah. I mean, uh, I uh, well, I can't even remember the name of these services. All the free ones, some of them, you know, like with commercials and stuff. But so what? Yeah, it's yeah, free. A lot of them now. Yeah, <laughs> I get to say, oh well, they're old movies. I said, yeah, but you turn on, you pay for. And there's nothing wrong with paying with Disney Plus. I paid for Disney Plus for a long time. I only stopped temporarily for a while with some financial woes. Uh, I'll get back to it again. Uh, but nonetheless, you pay all that money for Disney Plus and you watch a cartoon that's 59 years old. You watch, you watch a movie that's 14 years old. It's like, oh, I'm going to go watch Avengers. And like, I thought you wanted to watch something new. Well, that's that's new. No, man, Avengers came out when your kids were three. They're in college now. I mean. <laughs> yeah. It, it, one, the, the, only real, it, the only real issue I have with YouTube TV, it's not really YouTube TV, honestly. It's, it's yeah. networks in general, and it's the contracts they put in place. Like, for example... Yeah, yeah. The Predators. The only way I can watch a Predators game is either through the Bally app, because it's a Bally network, yeah, yeah, or through AT&T Stream, which I've just gotten rid of, because right. AT&T Stream had a RSN agreement with Bally that they can only broadcast on AT&T Stream or their own Bally network. So the Bally network is garbage. But yeah. So I'm going to have to now um, probably watch all my Preds games and subscribe to the Bally app so I can watch them because I can't watch them on YouTube TV. And there's a lot of weird stuff like that. Like I had to sign That's up for same. WNBA because my wife wants to watch WNBA yeah. games because <laughs> you can't get it. It's just the right. whole RSN thing is so jacked up. It's not even funny. It's ridiculous. RSN? Uh, regional service networks where it's like, you know, you have these local mm -hmm. networks that pair up right. and like go into contracts. Yeah. You know, with, and th you know, that's, um, it's not dissimilar. Oh, oh. Similar, anyways, uh, to to uh, the way sports, or at least hockey, anyways, works in Canada. Um, as an example, the Jets, they they uh, to watch it, I'd have to watch. Uh, I'd have to subscribe to sports. Now, I used to be able to subscribe to the NHL Network, which, interestingly enough, you couldn't do, uh, but you could do it in Canada to watch NHL games. I, I find that weird, but yeah. NHL lost the contract to play <laughs> NHL games. Yeah. So they don't even have a network anymore. Well, they do, but they can't. They can't broadcast games. So, uh, or yeah. So, so now you do it through the Sportsnet app, which, Sorry. which actually works better in the sense that when you turn it on, it just works. The, the the NHL network they often would freeze and cut out and stuff. But yeah. nonetheless, it it costs close to the same money, but they give you all these extra parts. You get WWE TV cares i'm sorry if i want to watch wwe i'll turn on raw free every week <laughs> anyways um and i used to i used to love it but i don't care anymore uh i don't want to have to you know you know and you don't have to but if you want to get all of the nhl games it's the same package that you have to get wwe it's kind of like when they first started introducing tiered stuff to cable tv 
Right. And at first we were like, I can get 197 channels or 340 channels. <laughs> yeah. Well, 197 of them are music channels, and 75 of those in Canada are French. 75 of them in in the in the U.S. are are Spanish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you, you and watch, it's, you watch five channels. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's ridiculous, and 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 yeah, the five or six of them are all at the time. HBO back in the days when HBO actually played movies, right? Uh, <laughs> it, it was a HBO one, HBO two, HBO three, HBO four. Oh, it's kind of like it's kind of like the BBC song that that, that uh, what's his name did uh, uh, Austin Powers in the first Austin Powers movie. BBC one, BBC two, BBC three. <laughs> they just kept going and going, right? And 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 that was it was a bit of a joke because it, uh, there was a time when there really was nothing else to watch in British television. Just BBC one, two, three. Yeah. It's, but um and yeah anyways it it's uh so watching a jets game i have to do that or they're periodically on network television in which case i can watch i i can't say for free because the cable i pay for it, it it's it, uh, it includes a, a tv package which is not right traditional plug-in tv it's the streaming stuff i don't use yeah. this because you have apps on the phone tablet the computer the TV itself has an app. Um, but it's interesting because when I do turn it on, I go, oh my God, that's right. That's television. And I forget because I'm using, I'm using an app. And I'm like, that's actual television. <laughs> it's so yeah, different. Right? Of, and, I, and I don't have to get up and go like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, that was a, my job when I was uh, a kid. Son, go change the channel. Put it on channel three. Put it on channel five. <laughs> I said, okay. Yeah. Click, 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 click. <laughs> and, and, and if you remember, when you had a VCR, there was one of two channels that you had to put it on. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I believe it was were, either yeah. three or. Um, yeah, I think it was three. Was it three and nine, maybe? I don't know. Three. I, don't I think it was know. three or four. But most were three for whatever reason. I, I don't yeah, know yeah, why that is, to be honest with you. I don't know. But, but I, I do remember that. That's and public funny. access television. We all had a public access television station. And a lot of people, yeah. I've heard some people say, well, if you're in a rural area, you probably didn't get it. I said, no, you don't understand. Rural areas had the most public access television. <laughs> right. <laughs> and yeah. some of them couldn't yeah. pick up network TV for a long time. It was late 70s before some places in the middle of Nebraska could get network television, for God's sake. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but anywho yeah well now with <laughs> starlink and all the internet options and you know streaming is getting more popular even yeah i've noticed here in the states there's a cable company that has started offering free streaming because they're trying to stop the mass exodus of you know people canceling their coax subscriptions to yeah you know, just internet streaming yeah. um and, and ironically, when we were talking about AT and T stream and all that, uh, do you guys have Direct TV, the the satellite up? In uh, not legally. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, well, we have we have we've always had Bell Express View, which okay. uh, for a while pretty much used Direct TV stuff until they built their own, uh, and it kind of fell out of favor. I mean. It, People are like, ah, I can only get so much because they ran out of room. They had to keep putting up new satellites to get another 10 or 15 channels or 100 and whatever, right? They needed yeah. at one point three satellites to get 250 channels. Again, 120 of them were music channels. Yeah. Um, and then they lose bandwidth, right? So that's bandwidth that they wanted to use for high speed data. So they basically said, we're not doing this anymore. So it still exists. Yeah, um, well, you know, H E and I mean, Directv so. started out as just a one hundred percent satellite dish company. Yeah, that you know, and it just was like Dish Network, in right? Areas, Dish Network still around. Yeah. Well, H E and T bought Directv, hence they had the AT and T Directv Stream service. Right, but they bought Directv. Um, I forget twenty fifteen, maybe. Uh, it's been a little while. Okay. For twenty six billion dollars, mm. well, that they didn't buy like a hundred percent of the shares. So here recently, and and maybe this is why all their stuff's gone to crap and why I canceled it. Um, they've since sold their shares, 
back to DirecTV for just under eight billion. So they they took it hard <laughs> on that deal. Oh my and god! DirecTV ah. has turned around and actually purchased and bought Dish Network. Here's the deal for Dish Network. So DirecTV bought Dish Network for one dollar, but is inheriting ten billion dollars in debt from Dish Network. <laughs> it's like, man, all you guys are talking numbers that are so far. Over I'm my sorry. Head. <laughs> when you said that, uh, wasn't there another company that sometime in the last ten or twenty years or something? did something similar where they bought it. Yeah, company there was something and they like were, that, yeah. And, and it was like it cost them hundreds of millions of dollars, and it, it just it wasn't doing what they thought was going to do. And they could, they could, the only thing they could unload it for was less than one-tenth the cost that, that they spent. That doesn't include the losses they incurred in the purchase or the debt they had to pay when they agreed to buy it in the first place. Well, I, I can't sure remember. I don't remember do if that was $1. Microsoft or... I, I, or I, I Oracle or something. Like I don't yeah. know. I, I don't remember. I can't remember what it was. Um, well, I'm sure you do $1 because you can't like just like, here, I'll give you my company for free that's worth, you know, whatever. Um, Basically, their agreement was to take the debt so they could take the, the assets. Yeah. That was it. Right, they probably exactly. wanted the assets, realized the assets were outdated and they hadn't actually done anything with them in 40 years. And that's exaggeration, obviously. Um, yeah. So but yeah, just... uh, ExpressView, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, w was a company that started up uh, in competition in Canada, literally. And I say this because thousands of people were getting DirecTV and or it's a Dish Network, which came first. DirecTV. Okay, it was DirecTV most likely then, and then maybe later Dish Network. Um, and they were like, "Well, we need we need to have our own." You know, like this is absolutely ridiculous. We have one satellite up there right now that we can use for communication purposes for this. So they purchased the rights to the satellite because the company that was had it up was doing something else. Or uh, they brought another one or whatever it was. They, I, they leased the, 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 the thing and they eventually bought it. I can't remember exactly how it went, but yeah. somebody, will, somebody will correct me. I'll be wrong about something in there. Right? It's a little fuzzy, but <laughs> anyways, um, then uh, after they got it launched and they had like, you know, 90 channels or whatever, they need more. So they launched a new satellite that offered them another 80 or 90 channels or whatever. And then if five years later, they put up another new one and each new one allowed them to add extra technology to it. By the time they got to the third one, HD had become a thing. However, they never had, when I was still using it, this is a long time ago, the actual ability to do proper 1080, which TV was barely starting to get into 1080 at that time. And you, well, sorry, televisions, no TV broadcast that. 720p was actually where it was starting to go in network television at that point. Yeah. So they had a thing called Super SD or something like that, or Enhanced SD. <laughs> and I, well, that looks incredible. All it really was was they just over sharpened the picture before they sent it to you. But it did look better. I'm not gonna lie to you, it did. Uh, and we had a, 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 we actually had a 1080p TV, not a 720. But so, Lionel, that's like saying. 56k is way faster than 28.8 okay <laughs> what what's that the difference between this 720 and this enhanced you know sd yeah. bs is like saying 56k was way faster than 28k on your dial-up modem no, it's, no, it, no, it, it, no, no, no. It's really no. kind of crappy, Hang on. no matter how you look at it. Hang that. on. No, that's <laughs> entirely not true. Because when you think about it, here's the thing, right? We were used to watching television on what would be considered, most people think, okay, 480, not P, but 480i, right, at the time. It's interlaced. Uh, and all of a sudden, the progressive scan does make a picture appear sharper because it's progressive scan. That was step one. It was progressive scan, which it had to be because it was digital in the first place. Uh, but the other thing is that when you watch television on a normal television, you weren't getting 480 nothing. You were getting like 360 or 90. I can't remember what the amount of lines. I think, yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Lines of resolution. I mean, in low, half the amount of 720p, half, right? 720p is more than half of 1080, but 
three sixty whatever is le- is is uh, only about half of the seven twenty, less than half actually, or about half whatever. Um, so it, it, it the the difference is night and freaking day, uh, and that's if you're watching on an, a TV that is either an early 1080p television that barely scratches the surface of 1080p capabilities or something lesser like a 720, then you actually start to notice that difference, right? Uh, if you do that on, on this 4k TV back here or yours over there, you're going to be like, I don't see a difference. They just both look terrible. <laughs> right <laughs> so there, there 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 was a huge difference it's like saying some people still to this day i can't tell the difference between 1080 and 4k uh to go to the that? doctor <laughs> lots I mean, of people who's... lots of people actually say that and i i honestly i don't why am i stepping on this um i don't understand it because the difference is so unbelievably that here's yeah. where i here's where you can technically tell the difference but you, in often cases, you can actually record and render a video and share it in 1440 and not tell people it's 1440 and they will automatically assume it's 4K unless they yeah. pixel peep it. Because 1440 is so much higher than 1080 already that 4K isn't always necessary. Your phones are almost all 1440. And it's like, right. well, I'm watching a video in 4K. No, you're not. You're watching a video in in in, in 1440. And if you have a phone that does 4 or 4K, yeah, you can put it in 1440, and I guarantee you, you will not see the difference. The pixels are too close together. They're tiny and too close together. Bigger the well, TV, why, the more pixels you need. Simple as that. That's why on my other uh, tech channel, um, I used to record video in 4K, and I I would have you know streaming issues, or I would have you know yeah rendering problems, or is big files, and so then I dropped it down to 1440, which my camera is capable of 4K, but I dropped the level down to 1440 in my software, yeah, and you almost can't tell the difference between 1440 and 4k, especially when you're watching it on, you know, a phone or a small, screen. Yeah, smaller, TV. maybe, you know, maybe if you're on a large screen, maybe, but even, even some larger screens, when you start, when you're in like, you know, 50, 55 and even 60 up to 65 inch TVs, you don't see it so much because most of these newer TVs do an upscaling job. Anyway, right, yeah. if you're watching a 1440, yeah. your TVs automatically, upscaling it to 10 or uh to, to 4k. 4k yeah um yeah so yeah that is a pretty good job on it, so for sure yeah yeah so but so that's why that's why crappier videos might look okay on your phone but as soon as you put them on a big tv it's upscaling it automatically and you're 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 seeing way too many pixels for what it actually has there so that's why it looks blurry you put that on a smaller screen even on the same screen if you could change the screen to 1080, which would be kind of dumb because then you would end up with a lot of aliasing everywhere, uh, <laughs> it, it would still look terrible. Um, but it would it would probably look better on a smaller screen again. Yeah, yeah. Well, before we wrap up, there's one thing um, I just want to make mention of. Um, I don't know how much you have seen any of the news about uh the carolina region with the oh. hurricane helene yeah. um it dude i some of this devastation some of this destruction is like they use the word biblical and it it's yeah you look at you're like literally towns have been washed away like gone and I, I have to admit, when that was coming in, I, I thought it was going to be a minor one and it was going to blow over and do some minor damage. And then people were going to go, hey. Uh, no, it's caused more I damage, wrong. I think, in the Carolinas as a tropical storm than it did as a Category 4 in yeah. Miami. Yeah, it's I, there's so much rain, so much water. It's literally washed towns away like they're just gone. And so it's really sad. So if there's anybody that, that happens incredible. to be watching from that um, area, um, our thoughts and prayers are with you uh, because. Yeah, uh, it's going to be years before some of those areas are 
back the way they were if they ever get back to the way they were. Uh, well, they, this, will. This they will. They will. This is resilience, right? And let's not forget the Carolinas in history have seen more than one major hurricane that has done absolutely horribly devastating damage. So uh, it's it's horrible. Uh, it's not good. And as as you said, uh, we're we're thinking about you. Uh, and and uh, we want well, this has changed geography. The amount of water that came, yeah. this has changed yeah. geography of of up in the mountains. This is not coastal region. This is mountainous region. Well, that has like washed the yeah. stuff. So right, yeah, it's it's terrible. So if, if anybody's watching from that yeah. area, um, thoughts and prayers are with you. You know, people are stranded still, and their helicopters flying everywhere, dropping supplies. So that's pretty awesome that people are doing that. So yeah, you know, uh, mother. That's the, the good, good, like good-hearted peace. people. You know, I mean, uh, I hate to hear about disasters. I hate to read about disasters. I hate to see disasters. I don't like to see people get hurt, die, uh, lose all of their belongings, their homes, and jobs, and everything else, and their livelihoods. But yeah. throughout these types of disasters, I love seeing the stories of the people who give up everything they have right now for strangers. Yeah. It's uh, it gets you there, man. <laughs> Those are the kind of stories that make like, we have a it's crap world. Everything goes to hell in a handbasket. Um, and then when something happens, everybody pulls it up, and they don't care whether they're Republican or Democrat or British or or Chinese. Uh, right. everybody's like, oh, "You need help, and I'm coming." And yeah. I I love that. Uh, so. Our our thoughts and prayers are kind of, uh, go to you guys, and, and we're thinking about you, and, and we know you're going to be okay because resilience of people. Yep, yep. So, so. but uh, listen, we appreciate everybody, um, you know, on that watches our channel and you know gives those thumbs up. So don't forget to give that thumbs up, like, subscribe. We got some links in the description to go check out some merch, to go check out some other channels. Please yep. go check those out. And, um, yeah, so on that note, I am Robert from the U.S. And Lionel from Toronto. And we will catch you guys next week. Peace out.